Number 8. Zahid Nassim In May of 2018, friends of British woman Christina Abbotts became concerned when she didn't turn up for her 29th birthday party. Local police went to her residence in Crawley, West Sussex, and used a battering ram to break down her front door. Abbotts' lifeless body was found naked on her bed, and it would later be determined that she'd succumbed to head trauma and manual strangulation. On the couch, the police found a bathrobe-clad man, subsequently identified as 47-year-old banker Zahid Nassim. As shown by body cam footage, he appeared to be unconscious, but a police officer and a paramedic noted that he could have been feigning his condition. He kept up the alleged act for roughly two and a half hours before he started speaking to law enforcement in the hospital. When asked about Abbotts' death, Nassim claimed he didn't remember anything and told officers, I'm not some hyper-high-functioning psychopath creating a story for you, a la Silence of the Lambs. An investigation revealed that Abbotts, who told friends and family she was working in IT, had been offering escort services online under the alias Tilly Pexton. She and Nassim had met on several occasions and they'd been captured by CCTV kissing in a supermarket leading up to Abbotts' death. An examination revealed that at some point during the drug and alcohol-fueled night, she'd been struck in the head 13 times with a kitchen pestle before being fatally strangled. Nassim would eventually admit to have hit her but claimed it had been in self-defense. He'd allegedly become fearful and overtaken by a red mist in the midst of a consensual game in which Abbotts was strangling him. Multiple defensive wounds on the victim's body contradicted his version of events. He was ultimately found guilty of murder and jailed for at least 19 years. Number 7. Neil Ellebeck In November of 2008, millionaire banker Neil Ellebeck got into an argument with his wife Kate at their home in Enfield, North London. Ellebeck, then in his mid-40s, had been secretly monitoring his wife's phone calls and reading her texts. He discovered that she'd been having an affair with their son's tennis coach, while also maintaining close relationships with the chef at the Ritz and the childhood sweetheart. Ellebeck had also reportedly been seeing someone else during the course of their tumultuous 14-year marriage. The HSBC banker knew a divorce was imminent but was allegedly willing to go to any lengths to prevent it. A row erupted when Kate finally asked that they separate. The argument turned into nearly an hour-long physical altercation, during the course of which Ellebeck inflicted 43 separate injuries on his wife, 18 of which were to the face. He then went out to pick up their daughter from school and when the child asked where her mother was, Ella Beck replied she'd gone shopping. In reality, she'd succumbed to pressure which he'd applied to her neck for a period of 20 seconds to 2 minutes. In the ensuing trial, a jury accepted that Ella Beck hadn't meant to kill his wife but he was jailed for 8 years for manslaughter. As of the latest updates on the case, the former banker had been released from prison and he returned to the home in which he'd killed his wife, while reportedly trying to resume his relationship with their teenage son and daughter. Number 6. David Fontana In March of 2022, a passerby found a mutilated human hand with glitter nail polish on it off a mountain road in Brescia, a province roughly two hours outside of Milan, Italy. The authorities were called and over a dozen more body parts were discovered in scattered garbage bags. The remains were confirmed as a woman's but she couldn't be identified as her face had been burned. The police released a description of her multiple tattoos, several of which were intact. The victim was eventually identified as 26-year-old adult film actress and OnlyFans model Carol Maltese, who performed as Charlotte Angie. During the investigation, the police were approached by banker David Fontana, who lived next door to the victim in Rescaldina. He offered information about her disappearance which directly contradicted what the police had learned. 43-year-old Fontana was arrested as investigators deemed his report suspicious. The authorities searched his home and found a large freezer, the same type of bags used to dispose of Maltese's body as well as incriminating DNA evidence. Additionally, earlier in March, cameras had captured Fontana driving the victim's car 
He ultimately broke down, admitted to have killed her on January the 10th or 11th. He kept paying her rent and used her phone to message those who knew her to maintain the illusion she was still alive. As per Fontana's testimony, he and Maltese had arranged to make two adult films together, the second of which was more violent. The woman was handcuffed to a stripper pole naked and with a bag over her head. Fontana then started tapping her legs with a hammer, progressively hitting her harder as he worked his way up. He then forcefully struck her in the head multiple times until she was on the verge of death. I don't know why I did it, Fontana reportedly told investigators, adding that in an act of kindness, he then removed the bag from Maltese's head and slit her throat with a kitchen knife. He cut her body up and kept it in his freezer, but disposed of the remains upon learning the police was looking for her. Fontana was consequently charged with aggravated first-degree homicide, dismemberment and concealing a corpse. Number 5. Stephen Irvin Saunders Florida banker Stephen Irvin Saunders was arrested by Hillsborough County Police in December of 2021 for punching a female teenager in the face during a road rage incident. The victim had allegedly cut off Saunders' custom Porsche 911 on Florida Avenue North in Tampa. While they were stopped at a red light, the banker got out of the convertible and approached her vehicle, yelling out a barrage of profanities. He then reached into the unnamed victim's open driver's side window and struck her in the jaw with a closed fist. In the investigation that followed, the teenager easily identified his custom-painted Porsche and then recognized Saunders when presented with a picture of his driver's license. He was taken into custody and charged with burglary of a conveyance with assault or battery, which Hillsborough County Court Systems view as a felony punishable by life. As of the latest information released to the media, Saunders had pleaded not guilty to the charge and was released on a $15,000 bond. Number 4. David Pomfret Barclays executive David Pomfret was jailed for life, with a minimum of 20 years served after being convicted of murdering his wife, Anne-Marie, on November 2nd of 2018. The banker then in his early 50s had attacked the woman at the stables where they kept horses, near their home in Winnick, Cheshire, England. He used a crowbar to strike 49-year-old Anne-Marie over 30 times, primarily focusing on her head as she fruitlessly cowered and tried to defend herself. David then left her to die in a pool of her own blood, cleaned himself up and disposed of the murder weapon in a pond. While in an apparent distraught state, he called law enforcement and claimed to have found his wife of 22 years with brain and blood everywhere. He maintained the facade of a heartbroken man for months before a key piece of evidence in the form of airborne blood on his socks tied him to the murder. He then changed his story and admitted to killing his wife but denied premeditation, blaming her volatile behavior for what he deemed had been a temporary loss of control on his part. Anne-Marie had a number of health issues which included being on the autism spectrum as well as having Asperger syndrome and she'd recently had treatment for cancer. Her decline in health reportedly took a heavy toll on David, to whom she'd allegedly been verbally and physically abusive for years. As David later told the authorities, she slapped him and called him names when he went to the stables to retrieve some tools. He then snapped and attacked her with the crowbar. During the ensuing trial, David was called an accomplished liar and an accomplished actor by the prosecution, leading up to the pronouncement of his mandatory 20-year sentence. Number 3. Robert S. An investment banker only identified as Robert S. by Swiss authorities was arrested on suspicion of murder in September of 2014. The banker then in his late 40s was accused of strangling a high-class escort to death at the five-star Dolda Grand Hotel near Zurich on September the 16th. He then moved the victim's body and about a week after the alleged murder, it was found in Robert's home in the town of Kuznacht. It stuffed the remains in a suitcase and kept them in a wine fridge in his cellar. The 25-year-old victim's identity was protected by Swiss privacy laws, but she worked under the aliases Ona, Deborah, and Kathleen. She had trained to become a nurse in her native Poland and kept regular contact with her family, who'd initially raised the alarm about her disappearance. Robert admitted to her killing but denied premeditation, claiming it had occurred in the spur of the moment. He claimed that he and his victim had actually been in a relationship and that she wanted to move in together. As per his account, he decided to remain with his existing partner, and an argument ensued when Kathleen demanded he pay her off. 
He told the court, I never intended to kill this woman. I just wanted her to be quiet. Prosecutors argued that for months, the banker had been paying Kathleen for intercourse and it was he who wanted a relationship with her before committing the murder fearing rejection. Robert was eventually sentenced to 17 years in prison. Number 2. Sanjay Nijawan On May the 21st of 2016, Sonita Nijawan was found dead at her multi-million dollar residence in a gated community of Weybridge, England. The woman's husband, 46-year-old Sanjay, had recently quit his high-paying banking job in the city of London while they still had a mortgage of over $800,000. He'd reportedly been depressed for months and suffered a mental breakdown when Sunita told him that she wanted a divorce. Investigators determined that he'd killed his wife by delivering over 120 axe strikes to her head and body. He then slit her throat with a knife before sitting next to her body and repeatedly stabbing his own legs. Hours before the brutal attack, he'd reportedly Googled ways to end his own life as well as soft parts of a female human skull. Relatives who were aware of tensions between them went to their home. After they were unable to reach Sonita on her phone, they discovered the bloody scene upon their arrival and alerted the authorities. Sanjay survived his self-inflicted wounds and a psychiatric evaluation was ordered. A jury ultimately convicted him of manslaughter after accepting that he wasn't in full control of his actions at the time of the horrific killing. He was jailed for a minimum of nine years and 172 days. Number 1. Rurik Juttin A Cambridge-educated banker was labelled sadistic and psychopathic by a judge in a Hong Kong court upon being convicted of brutally murdering two escorts. Rurik Juttin had worked for Bank of America Merrill Lynch's London office before moving to its Hong Kong branch in 2013. By that point, his life had reportedly spiralled out of control due to his addiction to violent adult films, drugs and escort services. On the morning of November the 1st of 2014, he called the police three times from his luxurious one-bedroom apartment at the J residence in Wan Chai, claiming that something happened. 30-year-old Seneng Mujasai, also known as Jesse Lorena, was found by officers clinging to life while lying naked on the floor. The woman originally from Indonesia had sustained knife wounds to her neck, throat and buttocks. She was pronounced dead shortly thereafter. Hong Kong police then discovered the badly decomposed body of 23-year-old Sumati Ningsai, also from Indonesia, stuffed in a black suitcase on the apartment's balcony. Her remains were wrapped in towels while her arms and legs were bound. During the ensuing trial, the jury was shown gruesome photos and videos taken from Jutting's iPhone. In addition to scenes of horrific abuse and violence, they also contained rambling monologues from Jutting including his self-confession. Ningish, the first victim, had been murdered after three days of prolonged torture carried out at knife point by the banker. After putting her body in the suitcase, he made preparations for a second killing, claiming he wanted to be as inhumane as possible. He found Muja Sai and offered her around $250 for intercourse. Upon arriving at the apartment and realizing the danger in which she found herself, the woman began to scream, jutting, threatened her with a knife, but when she continued to struggle, stabbed her to death. The victim's families asked for the death penalty, but Jutting, who had been found to suffer from narcissistic personality disorder, was ultimately sentenced to life imprisonment. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have all your money handled by a shady banker or be wrongfully accused of a bank robbery? Let us know in the comments section below.